Okay. Got him? I got him. Gotta get the turn. Peter? Peter? It's all right. You know him? Yes. He's one of our boys, Peter Mathis. Well, he's the one. Impossible. Is it? Tell him. Come on, tell him! Will you? Stop it! Now, look, I don't know what he's doing this far from school. But I'll tell you one thing, he's not making any phone calls. How do you know that? Because he can't talk. He's a mute. Come on, Peter. Peter was definitely in his bed at quarter of ten. I was on the floor myself. I saw him in his room. And less than an hour later, he's five miles away. Has he ever run away before? Contrary to what everyone in this town thinks, the Greenleaf boys are not constantly running away. Actually, he has, Mr. Quinlan, the first week. He was here, he ran away twice. I'd like to talk to his roommate. He doesn't have a roommate. Well, then I'd like to see his room. First thing in the morning, he can nod yes or no, can The fact that he can't talk, physical or psychological? Psychological? Psychological, physical, what difference does it make? The child can't speak. The child tried to set me on fire. Elsa will be able to identify him. Well, he was at the festival with the rest of the school, wasn't he? The night of the festival, Peter had an upset stomach, and I sat up with him right here. We didn't leave the infirmary. Maybe there's more than one of them. It's too incredible. I don't believe it. Well, in the last couple of years, has he been violent? No, he's been completely withdrawn. In your sessions with him, did you ever mention Michael? No. Did you? No. Well, where's he from? What's his background? I have his records in my office, if you'd like to see them. I would. Right. You get his records, bring them back to my office. Amy, here are the keys to the cafeteria. Make us some strong coffee and some sandwiches. If this has to go on, we can at least be civilized. Would you like a drink? I sure would. It's against regulations. Did you speak to Helen? She's all right. Mills left the deputy. That's nice. Help yourself. Thanks. You know, Doremus, it's quite conceivable that Michael didn't die and is living around here someplace. I mean, we don't know who he is, but when Peter sneaks out at night, they meet. Now, Michael has told Peter all about himself, and of course, he's sympathetic. As you can see, his mother was hated and died in a tragic way, too. They have a lot in common. I'll tell you something. Somebody else was in that barn. I did not get a bump this size from Peter. He's not strong enough. Let me see that. Put something on that. It was very strange. I mean, Peter behaved in a weird way tonight. As though he were doing something he was told to do. Now, he's the same age Michael was when he uh, ran away. Uh -huh. Exactly. Doremus, why don't you sit down here? What time is it? It's 2.45. Ouch. His mother was burned alive? Mm-hmm, yeah. Making some progress with him, though, through hypnotism. I'm quite close to removing the block that keeps him mute. <laughs> I'm afraid 
afraid I'll have to start all over again now. Yeah, well, I don't know much about psychotics, but isn't there a very slim line between the rational and the irrational? Mm -hmm, yes. Yes, you could think of it uh, this way. A man balancing a tremendous weight on his head while he's struggling along the road. Suddenly the road's black as night, filled with all sorts of terrible things. And two steps later, the sun is shining on the road, and on him. And maybe he'd like to think about what happened out there in the sun. I'd like to think about the terrors. But he can't. Can't stop. You can't stop, not even for a moment, because. Thank you. 